What's up guys, Full Stack Jack here. I just created a Nux3 module that will help you send emails from your Nux3 application with ease. And I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. Right now. <laughs> All right, one of the first things I'd like to do is to show you this um, module in action. If I'm, I'm at uh, avantagefullstackjack.dev. If I log in here, if I register, if I say, yo, yo, and then I do my email, which now I think about, I don't want to show you guys my email. Uh, let me think of another email. Hold on. All right. I did not just create this email for the purpose of this video. I promise. Let's go to the next app and I'll paste it in there and then I'll just do a super secret password and I will register. And now it asks, asks me to enter my one-time password. And if I go to this super old email that I just had already, if I go there, I'll see that I have this one-time password and I can copy it and I can paste it into here. If I'm gonna add a two to it just so it's wrong one time, we'll see it's invalid. And now we'll see that it's successful and then it's going to redirect me to the dashboard. And you'll have all that if you use this um, repository, you'll have that already set up. I haven't set up permissions yet, that's coming, you know, roles and permissions. I'm gonna make a module for that as well. But for now, it's sort of not doing anything, it just, sends the email, and then you can see that it is in fact saving those things to the database. All right, now let's see what this actually looks like inside of an application. All right, you've seen it work live. Now let's check it out in the dev environment. If you are using Avantage, then you don't need to set any of this up. It will already be set up, except I'm actually, I only have the Gmail um, option live at the moment. So I will probably add this, uh, mail hog, um, option before this video goes live. Either way I have, so for the setup, if whether or not you're using, um, Avantage or not, you should know how it uh, works. We have yarn add Nuxt mailer or NPM or PNPM or whatever the cool kids are using these days. I, it doesn't matter. And then we go to the Nuxt config. Of course, we need to add Nuxt mailer to the modules. And we also need to add some runtime config. Anything directly in the runtime config is private. Make sure you don't put any of this in public because we don't want any of this leaking to outside of the server, basically. We want to keep the app secure. And we don't want people taking our email credentials and sending a bunch of emails in our name. And we set all of these to an empty string, which means they will be replaced at runtime. Words here are camel case. So mailer, then the next word is user. And if we go to the ENV file, we'll see we have them words separated with an underscore. Nuxt is also necessary if you want them to be replaced during runtime. So anytime you have Nuxt underscore and then a word underscore word, those will be replaced in the Nuxt config like this. I'll show you how I set up the email in, in this application. You're free to do it however you want, but here's just you know an idea for you. So I have an email sender and I use, um, use mailer like this. This is how you import it with the hashtag and you just have use mailer and then you can do send mail. The reason I can do directly send mail is I'm using the defa default transporter, which uses those Nux config environment variables that we have set here. So because we have those set, we don't actually need to create a um, transporter. That's, that's happening automatically in the module. However, if we want to, we can, we could, say do a custom module or sorry a custom transporter a custom transporter and we can say mail service and then custom transporter like that and you can look at the node mailer documentation and you could set up your own custom transporter and then here you could pass it 
it's already type hinting for you. You can pass that custom transporter like that. Uh, obviously, this one's not going to work because it's not set up, but you can pass your custom transporter like that. If we go to the Nuxt, or sorry, if we go to Avatage the repository, you'll actually see, let's open up a, open that up in VS Code. Because I'm actually only using the Gmail transporter and you'll see that in this particular case, you do the same thing. So if I go to server, app, email, email sender, you'll see I use Gmail transporter and I set that as the transporter. So you can do a custom transporter. You can do any kind of transporter you like um, and pass that. And if you pass a transporter, it will use whatever you pass. If you don't pass anything, it's going to go ahead and use the default transporter. All right, I'll quickly show how this email function might be used. Right now, we see an email being sent and we see this template here. And we'll notice the template has HTML and text on it as strings. So we'll see where that's coming from. And then we have to pass in the, the from email, the from name, and the subject. Also, obviously, the who we're sending the email to. Now, this particular setup is using a verify email. That's a good example. Obviously, you'll be able to use any kind of email and any kind of template. So the template I'm using is very simple. It's just first we're creating a one-time password. And then we're saving that, but that doesn't have much to do with this tutorial or with this video. So we're passing in these variables and then we'll see what the template looks like. It accepts these variables and then we have a big HTML string with using backticks so that we can use template literals. And we'll see an example of a template, template literal here. And we basically have the HTML and then we have the text and then we return those. And it's as simple as that for using the template. And once we have the template, then we can send that along with a few extra um, things. So the subject, for example, and that is how you can use a template to send an email. So now I think you understand how that works. So let's see this one in action. If we go to run this application locally, yarn dev, and I've opened up MailHog on port 8025, and let's delete all the emails. That was a test from before. So let me log out, and if I register, if I go blah, 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 and then register, we should see a new email, which we do, and then we can use that also locally just as we did live, and we can see that that's working. And if just, just uh, some food for thought. If you want to be able to test locally, but also uh, use Gmail, you could just do a, um, you know, if environment equals dev here. If it's dev, use uh, Gmail. If not, use, or if it's dev, use MailHog. And if it's um, live, use Gmail. You could also do that. But if you're only using SMTP, then you basically don't need to do any if statement. You could just set it with the environment uh, variables here and it will work like that. All right. I hope you guys enjoy the package.